Hedgehog Hollow's new catalogue launch. Today we're on to page 80 and we're going to be doing uh, something with the Your Sublime set which I've uh, I've loved since the last catalogue. And we're going to do this little baker's box die because I've had it sitting in the cupboard for a while and I've never used it. So I thought we'd explore it together. So I've cut everything out ready to go. Um, so I've cut two of the baker's thinlets dies. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to cut the top piece if you notice there's a hole in the top. Now there's two ways that I discovered you can do this. The first one is using the piece that you get in the dies, which is here. Now if you're going to cut that, it's actually a bit counterintuitive. So rather than putting them right sides together as you would think, like that and cutting it, it won't line up perfectly as you will see on my sample here. What you actually want to do is put them together like this so that you've got the tabs here and this is your long side and then put it through your big shot like that. So that's one option you've got. If you don't fancy that, then let me just grab my circle punch over and you can do this instead, um, which I actually found was a much easier way of doing it, if, particularly if you're wanting to do it in quantity. I'm just grabbing the right one out my punch cart. I think this is a little bit too thin. Uh, if you just bear with me, here it is. You can use um, the three quarter inch. You can use the one eighth. Um, and there is another one which isn't coming to hand, so we'll stick with those two for a second. Here it is. And this is the smaller one, which is actually the perfect size. So I'm going to do this mine with this this time around, just to show you a different way. So there we go, so that's cut out on there. We'll pop those away. As I say, you can do it the other round, but just make sure you, whatever you do, you put it that way round and then it lines up correctly. So, the next thing to do is just to fold on all of the score lines. So I'm just going round the box. So we're just going over all of our score lines here. And these are ones that are made by the framelets die. So there's no um, cutting by hand required. I think I've done them all. So that's everything pre-folded. Then what we're gonna do before we assemble our box is we're gonna stamp out our loads of thanks, which is just here. So to do that, I've cut my piece of card to size, which was uh, two and a half inches by two and one eighth, and that fits perfectly on the box. And as ever, if you do miss any of the measurements, don't worry, they're all listed on the blog post, which there's a link to by the video. And what we're going to do is grab our loads of thanks. Now I'm going to be colouring it in with the stamp and write markers, so I'm going to use my Memento ink pad. And you want to ink that up. And actually, I'm going to use my stamp -a jig just to get it centralised. Now, if you've never used a, a stamp -a jig if you have a look on the channel and you can search for our something called a tool tutorial. So that's T O O L T U R I A L tool tutorial. Uh, you will find. There is a series, and the first one was on how to use the stamp -a jig and later this week we'll be having another one on how to do heat embossing. And that will just be with normal embossing powder. And then we've also got another one that's coming up for you fairly shortly on how to heat emboss using the heat and stick powder as well. So I've stamped that one out. You don't need to um, really heat it, but as I'm doing it quickly, in the video just to make sure it doesn't smudge on me that's just my heat tool very quickly just to make sure it's dry and now I can colour it in so I'm going to grab my two shades of grey um, so this one is the smoky slate and first of all I'm just going to colour all of this in using the smoky slate So 
so and then I'm going to pick up my blender pen which is just in my pot over here let me just can't see for looking today so I'm just going to grab one out of the little box here and then what I'm going to do wrong end off the brush end with my uh, blender pen I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of the colour and I'm going to use that to put in some highlights so I'm just colouring underneath those flowers where you get a highlight and a little bit down the edge where it would be darker and this just gives you a little bit more control okay. you can see that you've got a really nice little texture let me bring that closer up to the camera so you can see the different shading in there and I'm going to do something very similar with the tyre, but I'm actually going to start off with the smoky slate, uh, sorry, the basic grey because it's darker. Like so. And I'm going to use my basic black marker. And first thing I'm going to colour in the middle because that's how I like it. And then again, I can just scribble off to make sure most of that colour is gone. But I think I'm going to use a darker colour, which is not that important. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the black, and I'm just going to edge my tyre where there'd be a little bit of a shadow on one side. And the little bit that's left, I'm going to colour in my metal pieces. And as it fades out, it'll actually give you a really nice look of shiny metal as the ink that you've put on there fades out and I can just tone that in a little bit more okay so we've got a nice there you go and again I'll just bring that up to the camera for you there you go so you can see my shading in my wheel So the next thing we want to do is colour in our flowers and our leaves. I'm going to grab a couple of greens, um, a nice pink, a light pink, and a medium. Um, yeah, that should be a nice colour combination. So we'll start off with our lightest colour, which is our pink pirouette. And I'm going to colour that one in. Then I'm going to pick something slightly darker and I'm going to go over to this side. There. I'm going to take my medium pink and I'm going to do this top one. Like so. And then I'm going to take my light pink again and I'm going to do this one at the back. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to do those there. And I'm going to do the same on my daisy. And with my daisy I'm also going to give it a nice yellow centre. And we give all our flowers a nice yellow center and the last thing we want to do is color in our foliage now you could color this in um, copic style so you could put a lot more tones in it use your blender pen or you can do some of the more simple coloring like this you could watercolor it if you wanted to uh, using your refills or using your pens on a acrylic plate. There's lots of different um, ways you can deal with this and, and colour it in to your preference. So that's a nice, quick and easy way. So we'll just pop that to the side and we'll assemble our box. So, the first thing you want to do... Now, I would suggest using a fast fuse probably to assemble your box. I don't have any to hand, so... I'm going to use a combination of the old red um, extra strong tape 
and my snail because I found that worked really well. So I'm going to put that on there. And then what you want to do is line up your second piece with the, these two tabs to make one long continuous box. And I spent a lot of time trying to work out how to put these boxes together and the best way to do that. Then the next thing you want to do are these two tabs to make your complete box. So again, just a piece of the extra strong tape um, or whatever glue you, you have or you prefer. And then something I'm just going to do ahead of time. So my box is going to come together like that. So, is I'm going to pop some tape on the top piece because otherwise it's much harder to get to when you're done. stick those on I'm just going to put this piece to the side for a second so then you make yourself up an entire box and I've actually found that the next bit a bit static on me um, is actually the hardest bit was to get the um, the base of the box folded correctly okay so your bottom of your box, now I'm just going to bring out the diagram. There is a diagram here on the um, instructions for your big shot. And I'm going to bring out my sample because I did get there in the end. And I actually did it by working out. So I'm going to just open that out so I've got a nice flat base to work with. So what I did was I started with... Um, it doesn't actually matter where I put one. So I put one of the long sides in. I'm just going to make sure you can see this. Then I made sure I tucked this one underneath. Then I did this one at the back by tucking it underneath, but still out. You see how that interlocks? And then you do the last one by interlocking it under that one. And that sticks perfectly. And then what I did was fold those two tabs back. And you may want to replay that bit over a couple of times, but you can work it out from the diagram. If you uh, look at it, that's how I did it, lined it up in front of me. Um, but there are no folding instructions, so you need to do it via the picture. There we go, so that's that finished. I forgot to stick this on before we stuck it all together, but that's fine. We can do it this way because our box is still open. Not everything goes to plan, even when you're doing it every day. So choose the side you're happy with and stick that down. Now, you fold your sides just fold in like a, a paper bag. Now this is where I'm going to say word to the wise. Make sure you fill your box before you put your ribbon on. Because if I now stick these down, I of course can't get anything on the inside because I've stuck this and I've stuck my bottom. So either leave your bottom unstuck or your top unstuck, depending on what you want to do. But you will see that by doing it, um, when we punched our hole, you know, we had them the wrong, what looked like the wrong way around, it now lines up perfectly. Um, whereas if you do them on top of each other the way you think you would do it, you end up with a mismatched hole like that one. So, learnt by my mistakes. Now I'm just going to do this up because it's a sample one. I'm not going to put a gift inside. And I'm going to stick it together like that. Now on the uh, picture in the catalogue, let me just grab my catalogue here, you will see that they've used the gorgeous new striped ribbon. Well, mine hasn't arrived yet, so I have chosen to use the Flirty Flamingo Ruched Ribbon, which I'm absolutely loving. I'm going to need a new roll off soon. And what I've done is I've wound it all the way around. Realise that I've done this all completely wrong. Don't stick this down. I hadn't stuck it down. Then I want to tie my bow. You'll notice I always do it with the roll of ribbon attached because I find that I get less wastage that way. And then I can just cut my 
um, pieces to the desired length once I've made my bow. So matches nicely. Now we're going to stick this on, which is why I have my sticky strip still out. I'm just going to put a piece across there just to reinforce the bond across the ribbon. There we go. So that's stuck on there like that. And that is your box finish. So there we go. So there's your loads of thanks. And of course, you could do any of the Your Sublime. You could do a happy day, follow your heart, totally awesome. You could put any of those on there, depending what you wanted to use your baker's box for. So I hope you've enjoyed following along with us today. And we'll see you again tomorrow for another catalogue launch. Happy stamping. Bye. Mm -hmm.